Get that nigga Dan Prescott up out of here, please. He ain't doing nothing. Get that Detroit shit. You feel me? Rep the D. You understand? Hey. Cowboys ain't doing nothing. They don't get rid of that. And they gotta get rid of Jerry Jones. Hey, I agree with that one. Question for you. How many fourth downs does it take to beat the Cowboys? Whoa! <laughs> 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 and we're, we're walking away quickly of that. Well, good Thursday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you all have had a great day. Hopefully, um, the hurricane doesn't sound like it was as bad as they were predicting. It seems like um, it came through and it left. And hopefully, the devastation is not as bad. I think that at the moment, they said there was only three people uh, confirmed dead on it. So, maybe just maybe it didn't destroy as much as we uh thought that it might so i'm hoping that everybody's okay with that one uh much uh, not like the uh, helene that came through that the aftermath of that is still being cleaned up and people are still trying to get power on from that so definitely keep everybody in your prayers tonight Tonight will be interesting because the San Francisco 49ers that have a worse record than the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know that too many people thought that that was even a possibility and that anybody had that on their dance card. But right now, you would have to almost look and say that this is a must-win game for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, going up to the great Pacific Northwest and playing inside of that jet engine the Seattle Seahawks. I've been to quite a few stadiums in the NFL. I've been to over half of them. And the two loudest places I've ever been would be the Superdome in uh, New Orleans. And the loudest would definitely be at in Seattle. It is unbelievable the way the sound literally reverberates. When that place is rocking, you leave the place and your body still feels like it's shaking. It's unbelievably how bad it is. And, of course, the 49ers are used to playing up there because they play there once a year. But that is a big game tonight, and we will be live streaming during it. I hope you guys join me with that and uh, uh, help me celebrate my birthday. And, San Francisco, if you want to get me a present, get me an L. Get me an L against the uh, Seattle Seahawks. And, uh, Ginger, I'm rooting for your team. So for the Cowboys, here's the reality for us is reinforcements are not coming. Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones believe in their own guys. And they look at this from the standpoint of saying, yeah, we've lost Marshawn Neeland, but he'll be back at some point this season. Micah Parsons won't play this week, but he'll be back, you know, probably after the bye week. Demarcus Lawrence, he's lost, but... We'll get him back in, in probably the next seven games. Um, they're looking at this from the standpoint of saying, we will get more of what we have coming back. Tyler Guyton could be ready this weekend. I don't know that I'm ready to play him. I would rather see Tyler Smith playing against Adrian Hutchinson. So um, we'll see if that happens. I, for one, think that this is a mistake for the Cowboys not to try and go all in. With seeing the San Francisco 49ers with the multitude of injuries that they have, that they're not the team at the moment that everybody thought they were going to be. That's not to say they don't turn it around. They always seem to start slow, but I'm just pointing out they're not running away with it. Minnesota has a great record, but Sam Darnold, that second half, started looking like Sam Darnold of old, which is not good. And I'm still not quite sold on the Atlanta Falcons. And so with Jordan Love's injury and Green Bay having their issues, now there's Washington that's got a, the best record in the division, but they haven't beat anybody that's got more than one victory either. So there's some question marks throughout the NFC, and I would say that maybe this is the best chance that the Cowboys have had in a while to try and do something. You've seen that our depth has been pretty good, but we're kind of testing how much depth that we have. 
And the reality on the Cowboys offense is you're relying on Dak Prescott solely, solely. Now, it was great that we ended up getting Jalen Tolbert going yes, uh, last time, that Rico Daddle was able to pick up some yards and things. But the reality is this is Tony Romo back in the 8-8 eight and 8-8 eight and eight and eight years where it was we either going to win with Tony Romo or we're going to lose with Tony Romo because that's all we got. If you went out there, and I'm going to say that we as Cowboy fans, right now it doesn't seem like there's no nobody's offering a number one for Devontae Adams. And it sounds like nobody's offering a second for Devontae Adams. We will be sick when Devontae Adams is traded to somebody for a third-round pick. I understand the Cowboys look at their picks and say they're premiums. But as I go through, and I'm going to pull this up and, and read this to you. Because this is, um, I should have already had this up. Um, I just want you to listen to this. I would be willing to give up a second round pick. Let's go back in time here for now. This is what the Cowboys have had in second round picks in recent history. Marshawn Nealon, who was playing pretty good before he got hurt. Luke Schoonmaker, the year before. Sam Williams, injured reserve, of course, this year. Boss Man Fat, Kevin Joseph. Diggs, Premier, there you go, Diggs. Tristan Hill. Connor Williams, Connor Williams is pretty good. Awuzie, Jalen Smith, Randy Gregory. D-Law, there you go. D-Law is the second really good one. Gavin Escobar, Bruce Carter, and Sean Lee. And before that, you had Mar Martellus Bennett, Anthony Fasano, Kevin Barnett. So from the last 20 years, the last 20 years, you've hit on about 15%. Well, we'll both throw Connor Williams in there. We'll say 20% of your second-round draft picks. And here's the thing. The Cowboys are getting four extra comp picks this year because of the players that they lost. You can package those up now. You can move up and try and get some other compensation. So in my mind, getting Devontae Adams with the second-round pick is not the worst thing in the world. Now, I get it. The Cowboys' bottom line is the bottom line, and they don't want to pay that money. But if you end up... Getting Devontae Adams, one, that's going to help take some pressure off of CeeDee Lamb so his head doesn't explode and that you don't run him into the ground. Two, with Dak Prescott literally hitting nine different receivers, can you imagine if you hit a couple passes to Devontae Adams, what that guy can do? You will be able to outscore pretty much everybody else. And Devontae Adams will help at a multitude of levels. It'll help CeeDee Lamb because you can't really double cover him and Devontae Adams. It'll help your running game because you can't just put eight men in the box and have, could you imagine having Devontae Adams and CeeDee Lamb outside? Can you imagine that? That's going to open up the middle of the field. I can't put eight men in the box. You go 12 personnel. You go 12 personnel with Devontae Adams and CeeDee Lamb with Jake Ferguson and Schoonmaker or, or Brett Spann. Bro. And then put Rico in the backfield. What are you going to do as a defense? If you don't put eight men in the box, guess what? I got seven guys that can block. Seven guys, I'll take that advantage anytime. I'll run those two guys deep. So they take the attention away. Take the safety out of the equation. And I'll be able to run the football. That's what having Devontae Adams helps with the running game. If you do, if you do put eight men in the box, I got those two guys right there that can go deep. I can got Jake Ferguson in there. You're screwed. That's one-on-one -on -one coverage with Devontae Adams and C.D. Lamb. 
If we're talking about trying to have an opportunity of winning a Super Bowl, I get it. You know, we looked good against the Steelers, you know, but we only scored 20 points. We only scored 20 points. Some of that's turnovers in the red zone. But still, why sit here and go through and say, I think we got enough? Why not make sure we pack a little extra just in case to really set yourselves up? And this is the short-sightedness of Jerry Jones that drives me crazy. I get it. He's not going to be a long-term player. His age is older. I get it. But if you're talking about trying to win, and you always say, you know, if there was, if all I had to do was write a check, well, Jerry, all you got to do is write a check. All you got to do is write a check. And with the development of these young guys, you're in the mix of doing something that you haven't before. But do I think that'll happen? No, not at all. Not at all. And when Devontae Adams is traded and it's only a third round pick, we'll all be sick and we'll all go back to fire the GM. In the meantime, here's what, here's probably the best news that you can get for the Cowboys. And they're both of the guys are my pet players, okay? DMV, shout out to DMV. DMV had said years ago, it, it's pretty Captain Obvious, but you know we, we don't always remember everything that should be Captain Obvious. He said, when you control the middle of the field, you control the field, which is true. And we were actually talking about safety because that was at the time when, you know, we were thinking about Earl Thomas's and, um, and so forth of trying to get safeties because we didn't have any safeties and things. But we were also talking about the defensive line and the offensive line because what we've had a problem with in the last few years is um, since Travis Frederick is center position. And center is crucial. When you get a guy like Vita Vey that's literally eating guys for lunch, or you get guys like Dexter Lawrence that can get penetration upfield, it's harder for the quarterback. When you have those guys on your defense, it makes it harder for the other guys. When you have a center that can neutralize those guys, it makes everything better for your quarterback. Right now, the Cowboys... It looks like we may actually have both, one for each side of the field. And with the Lions being a great running team and great deep passing, you need a guy to take over the middle of the field to help get the quarterback off the spot, keep him from being able to step up. And that's what Mozzie is beginning to get to. So when I look at this and say, the biggest keys for this game are going to be those two guys. If Cooper BB can continue to hold down the middle of the fort, and if we do keep Tyler Guyton on the outside to take care of Adrian Hutchinson, then that gives Dak Prescott enough time to be able to survey the field. And if he's given enough time, he will beat you. Now, the Cowboys with Dak Prescott, I believe, are 5-0 and against the Lions. And I hope that we can find a way to make it 6-0. and to me, this game is huge. If you lose it, it's not the end of the world. But if you win it, the feeling that you get going into the bye week, knowing that your team is um, hurting as far as having players on the field, it changes everything because you look at it and say, we've got people coming back. We have we can be an even better team, and it sets you up with some confidence coming off the bye week to go against the San Francisco team. So to me, this is important, and it's important for Jerry Jones to recognize. And maybe it's not Devontae Adams, but maybe it's an Amari Cooper. Maybe it's um, uh, uh, Hopkins. Maybe it's just somebody else that has a little more experience because you can never have enough of those guys. But – we're the Cowboys. We're always going to be thinking we got just enough on our roster. So let's go. I want to remind you of something real quick here. Oop, not, not, not that one. This one. Before I get to ESPN. 
to be at the top at both of those, essentially. Like, it's... it's oh, 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 Dan! Oh, oh, Dan! Oh, 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 oh. Another farting Dan Orlovsky <laughs> situation. <laughs> what do you mean? Dan, like, fart we were taking. I did not fart. You guys be serious right now or are you messing with me? You guys are freaking idiots. I swear, Dan, Dan, we swear. No, you guys no. a thousand no, percent no, 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 we swear. We swear. There's no way. So no one did that. That was a, Dan, that was out of a movie, Dan. Guy, I'm so freaking angry right now. Which hey. auto wipers? Yeah, he's got leather seats. No, nah, I have. See? Did you just hear it? My wife texted me. She said, oh my gosh, McAfee show. I'm dead. I go, babe, I promised you on everything. I did not fart. I come home 20 minutes after being on your show, and now AJ's talking about it. If I farted, why wouldn't I say I farted? You're the worst, man. Why? What oh, are you like busy for? Your phone. You, you called me! What the hell? It's impossible. Yeah, so that guy, that guy, of course, is always farting on the Cowboys. Let's hear what they have to say about this matchup. He can hunt the quarterback. And then Harold, game of the week, Cowboys, Lions. How does Dallas make a he statement? Harold. Now, they're going against one of the most physical teams in the NFL, so you have to win the line of scrimmage. Easier said than done, but I like the, what they did versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. They ran the football effectively. They also stopped the run. If you want to beat the Detroit Lions, who's one of the best teams in the NFL as well, you have to win the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. There you go. Right, Chefty, how about this game? What, what, what do we need to know as we... Look at the notebook of, of what I think is maybe the glamour game of the weekend. Detroit maybe trending towards being the best team in the NFC. The Cowboys coming off a big win that I think got a lot of people a little motivated. A rematch of a great game last year oh, when yeah. Dan Woo. Skipper should have caught that yeah. touchdown pass, was ruled ineligible. Now we get the two teams meet again. And Dallas is even more beat up along its defensive front than it was last week when it went into Pittsburgh. Everybody was talking about the rookie second-round draft pick, Marshawn Nealon, replacing Demarcus Lawrence. Well, Marshawn Nealon was placed on injury reserve mm. yesterday. He's now at a minimum of four oh. games. Micah Parsons didn't practice yesterday, so it looks like he might not be available. So that might be no Parsons, no Nealon, no Demarcus Lawrence, mm. no Sam Williams from the summer, and somehow Dallas is going to have to find a way to slow down a very strong Detroit rushing attack, a great offensive line, and find a way to prevail the way the Cowboys did Sunday night in so, Pittsburgh. So we, we frequently will use a device on the show, bad game or bad sign. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to reverse it. Cowboys, have, you know, they win a game Sunday night that a lot of people didn't think they would. Was that a good game or was that a good sign? It was a good game. It's not a good sign. Here's the thing, Dallas. It was a good game, but not a good to prove you're a playoff football team. Different animal coming to town this week with the Detroit Lions. And you're going to see a stark contrast between what this offense in Dallas looks like pre-snap to what this offense in Detroit looks like pre-snap. This is a mm -hmm. dominant offensive line, and that's a, a strength for the, the Detroit Lions. One of the best offensive lines in football when it comes to running and one of the best offensive lines in football when it comes to passing. You know what the Cowboys are weakened? Both of those things yeah. defensively. Yeah. So can you handle the physicality from Detroit's run game and also the versatility of it? They throw a bunch of different runs at you. And guess who got the best, worst pass defense in the NFL right now? Yards per attempt. Dallas Cowboys. Over nine yards Ooh. given up mm. per pass attempt. Ooh. Guess who has the worst pass defense in the NFL when it comes to motion and then throwing a the football? The Cowboys. It goes to over 13 yards per attempt. That's something that the wow. Detroit Lions excel in major at. That's the key to this game. Can that defense slow down a dynamic and explosive offense. And if not, can they get into a shootout and find some way to win it? I know you put together some tape for us here of the other side of the ball. Yeah, because I think it's a good sign. I think for the Cowboys, we kill them when, they don't, when they're not able to finish a game. Sunday night, they finished a game, and we said, who's going to step up other than CeeDee Lamb? Sure. They were able to do that. We're talking about formations. This is Seattle against the Lions, Monday night football. You're going to see here, they get in a bunch, and they hit Jackson Smith and Jigba. Mm -hmm. There was confusion for the Lions. It continued to happen. Here it is another time you have three guys lined up somebody ends up wide open or running into somebody this is a first down by Jackson Smith and Jigba again and this is just simply lining up in a bunch formation well do the Cowboys do bunch yes they do Sunday night football you're going to see Ferguson come open a third down conversion again being able to get up the field and complete a pass here he goes a little bit of that motion just to make Dan all happy and they're going <laughs> to line up they're going to get in a bunch watch these two guys they're both covering the wrong guy because Ferguson 
Ferguson is wide open again, and they're able to get up the football field and make a big play. So I think that is something that can help them. Mm -hmm. And the game Tolbert had as well, other guys stepping up and showing that they can pass. What's unique about that play that Jake Ferguson is running? It's the same play. Same we used play. to call that uh, Y or F choice. We call right? it the so, route on decent. So you have a three-way go. You can break in. You can break out. If it's zone mm -hmm. coverage, you have a cover three. You can buzz out to that defender and hook up, as you've seen one of the other times. But looking at that film on Detroit, just the way they're aligned to me seems wrong. Like, it, yeah. like, talk about that. Like, and they play so much man that you have to defend bunches multiple ways. So you have to be able to switch it up so the offense doesn't know. Like, there's no one on the point man exactly. or trying to jack the point man. Doing I've this never seen that in a bunch formation. When so you're we'll see how that matchup plays itself out. Let's put the picks up on the screen, Cindy, because they always tell an interesting story. Ooh. You know my oh, motto, if oh, everyone Lord. is going in one yeah. direction, it never goes that way. It looks a lot like last week when everybody was picking the Pittsburgh Steelers yep. against the Dallas Cowboys, and we know how that worked That's out. That's exactly right. Graziano was the one person who went the different, other way, different and it worked animal, out though. for him. D Detroit this is, is a di di different Detroit's animal. a different cat, man. I understand. It's also in Dallas. I will merely say they have these really big buildings in Vegas. And if everybody knew what was going to happen in these games, those buildings wouldn't be there. Run the hurry up. All right. So they're not picking the Cowboys. Now, here's where the Cowboys will hopefully get a little bit of a boost. Okay. Carson will be back as well as Deron Bland will make uh, uh, his return as well. So the Cowboys getting some reinforcements, uh, getting a little bit of confidence and also getting home. Uh, definitely, hopefully will go into the Cowboys' favor. Uh, of course, they always, you know, whenever it seems like everybody says the Cowboys have no chance, that's when the Cowboys end up seemingly thrive. As always, I appreciate you guys. And let me say in advance, um, I'm getting a lot of text messages, uh, Facebook uh comments and everything else um, i'm going to try and get to all of them but i've got a roof i've got to go put on so i'm headed to work right now to get these shingles put on this roof before we get some rain next week um let me say in advance thank you very much for the happy birthday witches i'm mark holmes and i appreciate you guys and uh we will see you guys soon hopefully we'll see philly 500 he's been kind of missing in action I fire Howie. Fucking fire that motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you 